if I am right and these documents are legitimate, then generally trusted vaccines, the sacred cow of public health, given mostly to our nation's youth, said to have contributed most to conquering infectious diseases, are alternatively the world's worst curse and nightmare. The third and final document in this stunning sequence comes from the same National Cancer Institute and National Public Health Service report. Here is the historic account of American biologists and virologists transferring the most sophisticated bioweapons of mass destruction to Soviet scientists during the Cold War. Even though, as Dr. Kano accurately states, the Russians were developing their biological weapons programs at rocket speed. These documents provide conclusive evidence that the NCI's molecular biologists, including Dr. Robert Gallo, traded America's most advanced secrets in bioweapons production with precise methods and materials for cancer induction, genocidal weapon preparation, and bacteriological and virological bioterrorism with their Russian counterparts and others during the Cold War. Knowing, for example, that American military labs created AIDS, the Russian military and Soviet media had a field day and the opportunity to produce this comic. This was widely circulated in Russia during the 1980s. Here, American biological weapons contractors working for the National Cancer Institute are depicted exchanging a test tube full of AIDS viruses with a U.S. military officer who pays cash for the bioweapon. Our worst fears were confirmed in 1979 when an accidental release of anthrax occurred at a biological research facility in the town of Sverdlovsk. Much of our recent knowledge about their joint military and civilian program comes from a Soviet defector, Dr. Ken Alibek, formerly known as Dr. Kenachin Alibekov. He was the deputy director of BioPreparat, a cover organization for the civilian bioweapon and production facilities. Meet the CIA's leading bioterror propagandist, who, along with our grand doctor, William Patrick III, officiated the development of the world's deadliest anthrax. Dr. Ken Auerbeck is a Soviet Union weapons defector who provided much information about the biological weapons programs in his country. He has indicated that his country and the United States held similar studies trying to engineer tularemia strains that would be resistant to antibiotics and vaccines. Since his defection to America, Dr. Lebakov, alias Ken Alibek, has authored numerous articles and even a book to spread, like this government film, propaganda and bioterror. In essence, he is a pawn in a global war game featuring fear and educational indoctrination along with terrorization of the population. Although we had suspected for years that they had continued their offensive program, some of the information he provided was a real wake-up call for the United States. Prior to the Gulf War, the intelligence community suspected that the Iraqis had done research on anthrax, but they didn't know just how extensive their program was. So as a precautionary measure during the war, about 150,000 U.S. service members were vaccinated against anthrax. And more would have been immunized if the war hadn't ended so quickly. Dr. Kano lies again here when she said that prior to the Gulf War, the intelligence community suspected the Iraqis had done research on anthrax. This is a lie because the intelligence community did not suspect this they absolutely knew it. How did they know? Because the U.S. Commerce Department licensed the transfer of the anthrax to Iraq by the American Type Culture Collection, a company shown here in a copy of Senator Don Regal's Congressional Investigation Report of 1995. Listed here are just a few of the many varieties of biological weapons shipped to Saddam Hussein during the 1980s. So all that controversy about the CIA providing false intelligence about the Iraqis developing weapons of mass destruction is hereby shown to be a fraud and cover-up. In fact, every member of Congress knows quite well that the CIA's intelligence was accurate. 
They are obviously avoiding self-incriminating discussion about this evidence proving an American-based, multinational, corporate-controlled organization shipped Saddam Hussein all these weapons as published in the United States Congressional Record. These pages of war provisions clearly prove the profitable supply of deadly germs sent to three places. The Iraq Atomic Energy Commission, the Ministry of Higher Education, and the Ministry of Trade. More evidence of malfeasance comes from the Kamasiya weapons arsenal in Iraq. Saddam Hussein's army did have biological and chemical weapons of mass destruction that were shipped from the heartland of America. I never received, before, during, or after hostilities, any report of Iraqi use of chemical weapons, nor the discovery of or destruction of Iraqi chemical weapons. However, a little bit later in his testimony, General Schwarzkopf apparently contradicted himself when he said the following. Uh, I remember General Franks came to me, and I assume it was Kamasia he was talking about at the time, because I can't, I, it was about the same time frame, and talked about this huge ammunition dump that they had found with, with literally tons and tons and tons of ammunition in it, and there was no way they could possibly retrograde it, and I challenged him on that, and he convinced me that no, they couldn't retrograde it, and therefore they were going to destroy it in place, and I said, fine, now that's Kamasia. From what I heard about the size of the bunker that Franks was talking about and the others that they blew up, these were huge bunkers with, with crates and crates and crates and crates of ammunition in them. And, and I can only assume that, that they just, they looked, they either didn't recognize them or didn't see them at the time. I'm Dan Topolsky. I was the nuclear, biological, and chemical defense NCO for B Company, 37th Engineer Battalion. Uh, I was on the Kamasia Bunker Complex mission. Sergeant Topolsky was one of the nuclear, biological, and chemical non-commissioned officers in charge of identifying munitions at the Kamasia bunker complex in Iraq. This complex consisted of over 100 bunkers and 49 warehouses, each the size of a football field. And he feels that he and his men were exposed to chemical and biologicals when they were ordered to blow it up. Here's how he felt when he entered this complex. I, was, I felt betrayed. I felt like... Um we had been sold out for dollars when I saw what I saw inside those bunkers. Why would Sergeant Topolsky feel betrayed? What was it that he saw when he and the others from the 37th Engineer Battalion entered those bunkers? General Schwarzkopf discussed how the enemy identifies their munitions in his testimony when he said the following. Even though I had 40-some years in military service, if you were to bring in a bunch of ammunition and pile it up in front of me, and one of them was a 122-millimeter rocket with chemicals in it, I would not be able to tell you that that had chemicals in it, particularly if it was an Iraqi rocket with Arabic writing on it or something of the sort. We identify ours when we had them in a very specific way by color coding. I don't have the slightest idea what the Arabs did. General Schwarzkopf stated that we identified ours when we had them by color coding. As you can see, the colored bands on these munitions indicate that there were chemical and biological munitions inside these bunkers at Kamasia. According to Sergeant Topolsky, the yellow or purple bands indicate chemical munitions, where the green bands indicate biological munitions. Schwarzkopf also indicated that he could not identify munitions, particularly if they had Iraqi markings on them. You'll also note that the markings on these munitions are plainly written in English. And they indicated that these munitions were supplied to Iraq by countries like Jordan, Middlesex, England, the Soviet Union, or Russia, as well as the United States of America. According to the 1972 Geneva Convention, weapons of mass destruction are illegal. Therefore, according to Sergeant Dan Topolsky, it is very likely that these munitions were destroyed not so much to prevent Saddam Hussein from regaining control of them, but rather to destroy the evidence of these countries breaking international law.